The thing about the Flint disaster, the thing that drew us to report the story in the first place, uh, the thing about it that helps us understand the disaster that we're now in as a country, I think, is that the story of Flint was really the story of giving up on democracy. At the start of Snyder's first term as Michigan's new Republican governor a decade ago, Rick Snyder signed legislation that allowed him to just overturn an election anywhere in Michigan he wanted to. Yeah, in your town, you could elect your mayor and your town council and all that. But if Rick Snyder didn't like the people who you elected, by that legislation, he gave himself the power to reject the choices you and your town made in your election. He gave himself the power to declare an emergency, ignore the results of any Democratic election, and instead just install his own hand-picked person to come in and run your town or your city or your school board without any need to have any pesky answering to the voters. People kept making the wrong choices with their democracy. And so by rule, by order from the governor of the state, democratic choices would be overruled. They would be done away with because he knew better. And the people he gave himself the power to install were called emergency managers. The idea being that they would step in at the governor's say so, fix some sort of emergency, and then hand back the reins of government to democracy, to, to local democratically elected officials. That was the idea in theory. But of course, most of the time, these emergency managers, once they were installed, they ended up just staying indefinitely. So there was always some reason to consider it an ongoing emergency. And so town after town after town in Michigan, under the Republican souped up version of emergency management, town after town started getting a, a non-elected overseer brought in, chosen by the governor, a person who could make basically autocratic, solo, personal decisions by fiat. No need to answer the governed, no need to answer to the governed, no need to answer to the voters. Local elections who that purportedly were designed to choose local decision makers, the results of local elections no longer counted. And yes, the towns this was happening to, that, that kept having their elections nullified and overseers installed by the governor instead, yes, as you have probably already surmised, yes, they were, for the most part, majority black towns, or largely black towns. Uh, Eclecta Blog, which is a reported progressive blog about Michigan, Michigan politics, it's essential reading for Michigan politics. Eclecta Blog first dug into the census data and proved that Michigan Republicans' souped up emergency manager law was being disproportionately used to take away small d democracy from black voters in Michigan. They were right about that. In 2013, two years into unilateral Republican control in Michigan, half the black voters in the whole state had no local democracy, had no local small d democratic representation. Yeah, they could, if they wanted to, go through the motions of voting for local officials, voting for a local mayor, voting for a local city council or a local school board. But those local officials that they elected would have no power, no voice, no ability to actually do anything about local problems. That was taken away from them. And voters in Michigan actually hated this. They hated this emergency manager law so much, they actually pulled together to get a referendum on the ballot to repeal the law statewide. And the referendum passed, the law was repealed. But again, that was a little too much small d democracy for Republicans in Michigan. And so Rick Snyder and the Republican legislature there, they just passed a new version of the emergency management thing, except the new version of it made it virtually impossible to repeal. And the results of taking away local democracy, overruling local democracy, and instead installing these emergency managers, the results were dramatic. In Detroit, the emergency manager there cut off water to tens of thousands of households that weren't able to keep up with their bills. It was a situation so horrifying, the United Nations intervened to declare it a violation of those residents' most basic human rights. In Flint, in what appeared to have been an effort to save money, the city, under its emergency manager, made a decision that Flint would no longer get its water from the Great Lakes, where they always had. They instead would start getting their water from the local Flint River. And they made the switch. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to understate it wildly here, though. Uh, they made the switch improperly. Among other things, river water is much more corrosive to pipes than lake water is. But they ignored that 
They didn't treat the water before they pumped it into the city and the city's water pipes. And that corrosive, untreated water in a totally predictable way basically destroyed the pipes in the city's water system. And that's what created the disaster. It created a number of disgusting consequences for the people of that city that were immediately apparent to them. The people of the city of Flint could instantly tell there was something wrong with their water as soon as it was switched. They besieged their local officials, at least their local officials in name, right, to the extent that they had any. They confronted the people who they thought ought to be in charge of these things immediately, as soon as they saw the switch was made. But that's the beauty of having an emergency manager in place, right? Democracy is no longer operative. You don't actually have to answer to anybody in that town. You weren't elected. You're not susceptible to them and their whims. You don't have to answer to their needs. You were put in charge by a higher power. When the city council, the local elected officials, voted overwhelmingly, seven to one, to switch the water source back to the old clean water supply that they had and that they had never had trouble with before, the emergency manager appointed by Governor Rick Snyder not only rejected what they said to do, he called their vote, quote, incomprehensible. He basically said, no, I don't care about this overwhelming vote from this city's elected officials since they have no power. I'm not even going to take that under advisement. I think it's stupid. I overrule them. And that disastrous water switch and the refusal to listen to the people of Flint about its consequences led to the mass poisoning of every kid in the city of Flint. The mass poisoning of the people of that city. Thousands of kids who will live for the rest of their lives with the consequences of having been poisoned by lead early in their life, having lead exposure in their drinking water when they're kids. It's something you don't grow out of. It's something for which there's no magic antidote. The Rick Snyder administration ignored warnings about the lead. They attacked scientists and a local doctor who tried to warn residents about the lead. It was the same thing with the Legionnaire's disease outbreak that was apparently caused by the same botched water switch. That outbreak killed at least 12 people. Some estimates, though, put it as high as 70 people dead from that. And nobody in Flint was warned about that outbreak for a full year, even as emails about it pinged around the highest levels of the Snyder administration. They just didn't tell anyone. And now, now, finally... Governor Rick Snyder and many of the most senior officials involved in the Flint disaster have finally been indicted. These are their mugshots from today. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.